In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a rod with a float for course fishing. We'll be attaching a waggler float to the fishing line, called a waggler float because it waggles, and if you're not sure about floats then do have a look at how to pick a float in the link above. Make sure all the eyes of the rod line up in a nice straight line before pushing the sections together. The line I use when I'm float fishing is typically three to six pound breaking strain. First of all unclip it off the spool bring it round underneath the bail arm so it's underneath the roller. Now you have two choices here, you can either loosen the clutch so you can pull the line off, perfect on a windy day, or if it's a nice still day like today you can undo the bail arm and start threading the line through the eyes of the rod. So I'm going to choose this float. We need to lock it into place on the fishing line and we can either do that by using split shot or using these rubber float stops and I'll show you how we put them onto the line. Thread the line through the the loop and then pull the stop over the line and that's now on the fishing line. The float that I've chosen is a Drennan Glow Tip Antenna 3BB. It's very sensitive to bites and brilliant in still conditions. Using a float attachment means that you can change the float over when the conditions change. With the float in the float adapter and the float adapter on the line, I lock it in place with another float stop. At this stage you might want to add a hook to nylon and plumb the depth before putting any shot on. This float requires 3BB shot. Think of it as laying the line on the shot, not putting the shot on the line. Find the groove, lay it down and close it up with some pliers. Tight enough to stay on, but not so tight that it damages the line. With the required split shot attached to the line next to the base of the float, it's time to find the end of the line so that we can tie a loop knot before attaching a hook to nylon. For a tutorial on loop knots, see the link above. Choose a hook to nylon that's at least one pound lower breaking strain than your main line. Unravel it carefully with your fingers through the loop to stop it from getting tangled. Push the loop that you've made in your main line through the little loop in the hook to nylon. Then drop the hook through the main line hoop and pull tight. Lastly, I'm adding a number eight shot just above the hook length and another one halfway down. These are known as dropper shot or telltale shot. As I cast into the water, the hook bait will be taken down by these dropper shot and if they reach the bottom, the float will cock down to the orange tip. If it fails to cock, it means a fish has intercepted a bait on the way down. Also, if a fish picks the bait up off the bottom, sometimes the float will lift giving you early bite indication. Dropper shot are a crucial part of the waggler setup. They help keep the float in position. If the float drifts because of wind or tow along the bottom of the lake, the dropper shot hold the hook length in place on the bottom so the hook bait's not moving around any differently to the free offerings of bait that you've introduced to the area to bring fish in. There's so many different variations and considerations that you can apply to this shot pattern, so see the link for more info. The key to fishing a waggler float effectively on a still water like a lake is to make sure that it doesn't get blown around by the wind and move out of place. We can achieve that by feathering the spool with our finger so that the float lands in a straight line. We can put the rod tip under the surface, do a sharp turn of the reel handle and flick up to sink all the line between the rod tip and the float. The reason why we don't want the float to move out of position is because it causes the bait to be dragged along the bottom. The fish will quickly identify which is your hook bait if it's moving unnaturally. Even having done all those things, the float is still very slowly drifting because undercurrents still exist in still waters. In this instance, I'm fishing over depth by about 10 centimeters and one of those dust shots dragging along the bottom to slow that drift down. If you're not familiar with plumbing the depth, do check the link above. This is 10 minutes later, and you can see by catapulting a small amount of maggots into exactly the same spot, has got the area completely fizzing with feeding fish. The float is bobbing up and down, moving left and right, where the fish are bumping the line, or picking up the bait and then rejecting it. So you can see the importance, hopefully, of using the finest tipped waggler that you can get away with in the conditions that you're fishing in. A long rod helps you pick up the line and set the hook. 
You have to strike quite hard when you've sunk all the line, and the further you've cast, the harder you have to strike, sometimes even turning the reel handle at the same time. I had to fish quite close in to make this video to get the close-ups on the float. Normally I'd use a pole at that sort of range, but Waggler has three advantages over the pole, the obvious one being that you can fish beyond the reach of a pole by casting further out. The second one is that over clear water you don't have a rod directly above the float, scaring fish away. The third one is you've got much more control over big fish if they try and get into snags or underneath the fishing platform. But I guess the thing I really want to get across in this video is it's such good fun. Even when you lose fish. And hopefully I've inspired you into giving it a go. If I haven't, then please have a look at the other playlists as I'm an all-rounder that enjoys all forms of angling. Thanks for watching.